What up guys, how are we doing? So you probably guessed it from the title, I have taken steroids. So I'm going to get straight into it, I'm going to tell you exactly what I was taking, how much I was taking, but I'm going to, we're going to do a deep dive guys. So it started when I was 20 years old, um, I had a friend at the time, I won't, I won't say his name for, out of respect, but I had a friend at the time who had, who was my gym bro. You know, we were six, all from age 15 onward, he was my gym bro. Like we gym together hard. And it got to a point where naturally we're both kind of peaking a little bit. I say peaking, we're only fucking like 18, man. But at that time we thought we were peaking because you're immature, right? And you have this false narrative when you're young as well, when you start hitting the gym, that you think everything is optimal and natural. So when we were 15, 16, 17, even 18, hitting the gym, we thought guys like fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger, The Rock, you know, all these Hollywood actors that you see in films, we all thought they were natural. I bet they are. Bet fucking uh, Chris Hemsworth is. But yeah, we all thought they were natural guys and we thought that was obtainable. So that was what we were striving for. And we realized we weren't getting fucking close. Even the fitness influencers that we were seeing we thought was obtainable we thought Ziz was natural for a, and I'm not hating on Ziz but we thought he was natural for a, a good point and we were just not getting anywhere and I remember he we bumped into a few other people at the gym and he he basically started getting on it my friend he started taking testosterone trembolone I think he, he was taking a lot I can't remember what he was taking and I I, I stayed true to the course I kept natural because I was scared I'm not gonna lie I was scared um, more, more, more so than not, because you hear all these stories about people dying from steroids and how bad it is. And then, um, oh, when was it? I got to uni and I was like 19 and I don't know what happened in me. I don't know what it was. I don't know why, but I just said to myself, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. So I reached out to my friend, who, because we separated a little bit, because obviously I went to uni, he moved on a little bit, but I got back in contact with him and I said, I want to gear up. And I think it's because, if you if you watch my last video as well, you'll realise that um, in my first year of uni, I was completely heartbroken. I, I got ruined by a girl that I thought I loved. And I think part of that, so I think part of my mentality was to become somebody who she would you know, be jealous of, and to me that was to get absolutely fucking massive and jacked. And I think that part part of it played into that to as well. Um, and I had just like torn my ACL, so I was coming off a, a big injury and trying to get back into fitness. So I thought this would help kickstart and boost me back into where I should be, and and more. So I started researching certain. Um, steroids and I didn't want to inject myself I was too scared to inject myself I didn't want to inject myself I didn't want to have to put things and store things in a fridge because obviously like that looks weird how would you hide that from people um, how would you hide that from your parents you know when you went back home and stuff so I ended up finding um, a steroid called Anabar um, or Oxand Oxandrolone it's called medically but anyway I, I, I yeah, basically ordered that and <sighs> First cycle, um, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I'm not gonna lie, don't know what I was doing. I was just popping pills, basically. Um, I was he, I got fifty milligram tablets, so I was taking fifty milligrams a day, jumping straight into fifty milligrams a day. I didn't even ease myself in. So what I would do is bite. It was a fifty milligram tablet, so I bite it in half, take a half in the morning, take a half at night, and I kid you not, that first cycle, guys, I became unstoppable. I'm, go I'm being on. I'm going to be truthful. We'll keep it real on this channel. I became fucking unstoppable. It was a fucking experience that I've never felt before. Not only did my lifts go up massively um, and quickly, not only was my recovery shortened and half, it, it took half the amount of time to recover, not only did I become more like muscular, but like the muscle actually hardened, like the skin around it tightened up. It was like leather almost, so like everything was like more exposed. I looked great. I found I could eat whatever the fuck I want and still stay lean, which was incredible because if you guys know me, I'm a, I love my food. I've got a big sweet tooth, so that was great. 
Um, but also, not just in the gym, but what I actually found was it helped me mentally focus. So basically what happened was like, I don't know, like I started just training harder and I started to become more rigid and disciplined. I was waking up at five in the morning, being in the gym for six, uh, and then being at my uni lectures from like 10 till five, 10 till four. Then after that, I'd be doing like revision work or going to a part-time job. Like I just felt more structured. I felt more mentally clear. I had no fog in me. I knew I was driven. I was practical. I was never procrastinating. I was never dilly-dallying about. I just felt so driven and so focused. And I was like, oh my God, this must be it. Maybe it's placebo. I'm not too sure. But I, I was just like a, a super freak. I was just doing everything. Bam, bam, bam. And I saw so much fucking progression in my first year at uni because of that. But, and I say but, um, I, that's another thing actually guys, before I say, not that my sex drive went up, but I could control it so much better. So like, I wouldn't even like fap throughout the week. And then obviously I'd be going out on like a Saturday or Sunday and then I'd meet a girl and it was like, it was like, it was, it was so rigid for me, you're right. And it was like easier to pick up girls, which I'm not endorsing, but it, it was at that time. But every action has its consequence. And as a newbie to this whole thing, um, I didn't take any, you know, post psychotherapy. I didn't even know what PCT was. Um, I didn't even know you should ease into it and ease off of it. And so I developed tiny, a tiny bit of uh, gyno, which I still have. And if you don't know, gyno is like a little lump on your nipple. So like, even when I'm lean, you can still see like a tiny lump under my nipple. Uh, it is what it is. You have to get surgery to do it. I don't have money for it. Um, and you know what? I've, I'm fine with it now. I don't really care. It is what it is. It's part of me. Like stretch marks when you go to the gym. Uh, and it's not that bad. Like if you build up your upper chest, it kind of helps balance it out. So I'm not too harsh. But it is a side effect. And, you know, it wasn't great. Um, but in terms of like, you know, any other sort of side effects, you know, I probably got a bit of, I probably got a tiny bit of back acne. Um, I did get a wee bit spotty on my back. But apart from that, I never really got any other bad side effects. So it's great, right? And then obviously I have to take, go off of it. And then I, I went to a second cycle because I thought, this is fucking great. And that was at the time when I was with my second girlfriend. Um, and I kid you not, the second time, I don't know what happened, but everything I wanted to like have, I, my sex drive went through the roof, if anything, I wanted it all the time. And physically, it all went great again. Physically, I was making really good progress, making good gains. My skin was tightening up again, becoming quite leathery. Um, but I found mentally it was a lot harder because I just had this massive, massive sex drive and I couldn't control it. And I think that actually led to a lot of conflict in that relationship. Um, uh, well, no, I wouldn't say so because it was only one cycle I did at that time. But I, I do think there was a lot like that caused some conflict. But in terms of being driven and being ambitious, I, that was still there. Um, in terms of side effects, um, I didn't notice any because this time I learned to take post cycle therapy. So I was taking Nobledex, um during and after that cycle. So I didn't really notice many side effects apart from again maybe a little bit of spottage on the back but yeah that I think that that cycle was really a bit mental in terms of like it, like it was completely different like my sex drive wasn't massive in the first cycle and it helped me have a clearer mind it helped me with brain fog whereas the second one made me a bit maybe a bit more not paranoid but like a bit more anxious um, and it increased my sexual energy a lot more, um, which is great, but also not great when you're in a relationship and, you know, it's not going well. <laughs> um, and then I took it for a third final time um, in, like, my last year of uni. Um, and that time, uh, everything was fine. Um, I'd say, actually, sorry, I tell a lie. I took it um, in my third year of uni, but I also then added in a uh, clean butyrol or clean. Um, I'm not too sure what the medical term is, maybe it's just clean butyrol. And that is when I stopped taking steroids because this third cycle, guys, was a bit scary. And maybe it was because I was also taking clean butyrol. But um, I had done a lot of research now in my third cycle. I was a bit more seasoned into it, I guess, right? I was making good gains. 
<coughs> and then I decided to take some Climbuter watches, really. It, basically what it does is it increases your heart rate a little bit so that it mimics you doing like sort of light cardio. So you burn more calories um, and it helps you keep the weight off. Uh, and I just thought I'll do that alongside Anna Bar so my cut will be cool. And I kid you not, guys, when I say it raised your heart, I, I, I was anticipating what it fucking did to me because I took it and it genuinely felt like I had down 20 red bulls. Like my heart was just, I took it actually right before the gym and the gym session was going okay. And then towards the end of the gym session, my heart rate just spiked uncontrollably bad. And it was at a point where I was like, fucking, this is a bit scary. My legs started shaking, like everything was shaking. I had like no control of my body. I had to find a way to get home, so I, I had to drive home. The whole time, my legs shaking on the clutch and the brake. So it was like oh, so hard to drive. I'm surprised I even managed to get home. My breathing was really heavy. And I remember just like thinking, if I just, if I just lie down, I'll be okay. If I just lie down, I'll be okay. And I was lying down watching TV and I was like, and I was, I was just breathing normally. I thought I was breathing normally. And my mum from the other side of the room was like, Jay, why are you breathing so heavy? She could hear me breathing. And it was because my heart was like pounding. And then I went to the toilet. I was feeling dizzy, feeling sick. And I just remember like spewing everything out. And I just remember lying on the bathroom floor thinking, fuck, I'm going to have a heart attack here. Like, this is it. This is my, this is it. I'm, I'm going now. I'm a goner. And it was, and I was sweating profusely. Like, it was bad. It was so bad. But I read somewhere, like, if you take one clean bit of it wears off after 24 hours. So I said, all I've got to do is just lie in bed. And this was like at 7 o'clock, guys, in the evening. I was just like, I've just got to lie in bed, try and sleep, and it'll wear off. And I, I had the worst sleep of my life, but it did eventually wear off. And everything started to calm down again, and it was, I was fine. But that experience of clean beauty all scared the shit out of me to the point where I was like, you know what, I'm done. It's not worth it. You know, I was I'm making good gain. I was making good gains, but it's, it's it's not to the the amount that I need it. And I was never I'm never going to compete in bodybuilding. Never going to do anything in that sort of environment. Uh, I like my sports. I like going to the gym. I don't I don't need it. And I, I, that's when I stopped, guys. But I want I'm trying to be transparent with you guys about my experiences. I've had good experiences. I've had bad experiences with steroids. And this isn't me saying you should take steroids. I'm I would I would tell you not to. I would say be healthy stay natural but the reason why i'm kind of telling this is because i was young i was naive when i first took it you know i i thought these fucking great guys the rock arnold schwarzenegger were all fucking natty even athletes and fit even guys in gym shark and fitness influencers that you see i thought they were all natty so i thought everything was obtainable and i realized it wasn't and it was we're living in an unfair game right because the media is depicting us as this is what the ideal man should look like and here he is on our screens but he's absolutely roided up you know it, it, and now i look at it as somebody who's matured and has been in the gym a long time and you know done loads of like courses on you know pt and stuff like that i see it now like i, I was watching the last horror movie with chris hensworth and i was like that guy's on steroids it's so blatant obvious but if a 60 year old jay was watching that, i'd be thinking fuck that that's that's the goal i want to get to that point but obviously it's impossible unless I start taking steroids. And it's just an unfair world for guys, I think, at the moment, because the media is telling us to have this objective look about ourselves. And we're fo and then all these fitness influencers as well, <coughs> who are clearly taking things and then promoting their bodies and then telling you to sign up to their online coaching platform or selling you a product or, um, off their website. That coaching program and that web that products on their website isn't going to help you get in shape because what help them get in shape they're not going to tell you because if they tell you so long go the sponsorships the endorsements why would you then buy their coaching program why would you then buy their their uh, supplement product because if you know they're on steroids you would just do that so that's why it's the world world's worst kept secret because if they tell you then they make no money but here I am, I'm being transformed. I'm trying to break that stigma, guys. But I wanted to share my experience with it rather than just rant on and say, oh, don't do this. Like, I've been in great shape through steroids. I've been in great shape out of steroids. Um, and yeah, I took three cycles and, you know, it, it was bad. You know, and I've got like a tiny bit of gyno now for the rest of my life, unless I ever get an operation, who knows? Uh, the back acne kind of has gone, to be fair. I've always had like a bit of a spotty, spotty back. 
it's not the worst to be honest but yeah it's always had a bit of spottage but yeah i just want to be honest and transparent with you guys and i hope you take this video and sort of see that what you see in the media is all fucking smoke and mirrors guys it's all a facade it's all fake and you don't and i encourage you if you are watching this and you're on that line of debating yourself on if you're thinking if you're thinking about taking steroids i urge you not to but obviously i can't control what you're doing and if you are going to take steroids please do it safely please do all your research um, and do it do it correctly don't just jump the gun like i did in my first cycle because I, I i regret that one <laughs> um, um but yeah guys i just wanted to be honest with you and sort of expose the world for what it is as well for young men and for men in general because i feel like you know people people look at men and say oh like you know you you don't get you don't feel bad you know you're not compared to all these supermodels and or uh, girls on reality tv or catwalk models who are like skinny and and all this and all that but it's like well we actually get the opposite we might not get compared to fucking skinny little models but we get compared to fucking beefcakes and fucking muscle people sh carved out of rock you know what i mean so it's a different it's a different comparison but we still feel the same pressures so anyway guys i hope this video helps you peace out